Uh, we may as well just, I may as well just start talking. I have a little topic I can lecture on today. I can go over any questions. We're not, we're not trading today. At least I'm not. I mean, click does not look good. Uh, there's no volume here and it wouldn't rate well either. So, um, and it's four minutes before the open. So I don't like anything I've scanned. I don't like anything, any, any ideas anyone's given me. And I know that there isn't any good gaps today. So it's like not even, I haven't even rated anything. So it's very unusual based on the fact it's earnings season, but it is what it is. So <laughs> the deck, if you want to watch on your own, uh, it's totally up to you. I am not doing this, and I'm not even going to watch and call it because I just don't even have any conviction <laughs> whatsoever. So <laughs> the SPY looks better to rally today than the Qs. Actually, the, the, uh, the diamonds look better to rally than anything. Um, so what I thought we could, first of all, I, I thought we could go over a topic I have today. I do a little teaching and then yeah, that's it. But before I do, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions at all about anything from yesterday? Yesterday was a good day. Uh, we can go over any questions you have from the week. If not, I have a topic to lecture on, but I am not trading and I'm not calling any trades. That wouldn't make any sense. Obviously, if I like something else to call it, I do it. <coughs> Do you have a question on Starbucks? What's your question? So this is just an open forum here. You can ask me any questions and anything you want about gaps, about day trades, about the options, anything. Because I'm going to spend some time here with you if you want to go over stuff and I do have a topic to lecture about. So don't leave, even though we're not trading, because I am going to talk about something I think is important. Uh, Brent is still in the option. Why, I guess, would be my question. <coughs> First of all, I didn't see this last night. Is that bar real? Pretty much looks like it was real. Uh, this looks like it was real here. Yeah. Uh, why are you still in this, Brent? So I had called an option trade in Starbucks. It worked. It was good. Galahad got out too early, but at least he got out with money. Brent is still in it, which I don't know why, but what is your question? Looks like that bar was real. It's got another week to go. Yes, but how much were you up yesterday in this? Like, let's just, you know, I mean... How much did you risk in this, and how much were you up yesterday? You were up $200. Okay, and how much money did you risk in it? There's no way you could have only been up $200 in this at the high yesterday. Not if you paid 60-some cents for it, unless you really only risked like 100 bucks or something. Did you only get like one or two contracts? How many contracts did you have? Okay, you got three contracts. So three contracts, okay, so you paid probably around 60. So you paid 180. You were up more than 100%. And so the reason you didn't get out was... the reason you didn't get out of the trade so while while Brent is writing in here it looked strong well it didn't close strong it looked strong it was strong now you sound like Galahad well it looks good yeah but you had made a hundred percent return on it and what did I say the exit was in this? Wait till it goes over the high. It's gonna go over the high. Wait till it goes 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 over the high. Galahad didn't listen to me, got out early, but this went over the high and you didn't get out and you were up your monetary risk. You were up the second target. 68 was the first target. 69 was the second target. Second target didn't get out. It didn't close strong. Yes, it looks strong. This chart is in an uptrend. This chart can make a new high sometime, whenever. I don't know when. Could it be today? Maybe if the market rallies, this could continue today. But it's not the point. It's not the point. 
It's not the point at all. This went to the second target. You made 100% of the money that you risk. And also, even if you hadn't, if you were watching this, when this broke down here, you should have just put through an order out and got out. Now, I don't know how this closed, but it definitely didn't close with you being up $200. The fact that it looks strong has nothing to do with anything. This could fall today and still look strong. Your option could be worthless today by the end of the day, and I could still come back and say the chart looks good. So do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Amazon looks strong. Amazon is strong. Amazon gapped down in earnings, but the chart's still in an uptrend, but I'm not gonna buy Amazon today. And if you were in an option yesterday, you're down today, even though the chart looks strong. Do you know what I'm saying? That's always Galahad's reasoning for not getting out of it. Well, it looks good. The market looks good here too, but I would have been, I would be out of the mar options in the market yesterday. And at least, at least 50% or 75% of the trade. Now, nobody, nobody ended up doing them. Galahad killed it. I, you know, I don't know what anybody else did, but the point is that if you had done the, mar the market calls, they were great trades to get exit yesterday. One, because you didn't know what Amazon was gonna do. Two, because you didn't know what the economic data was out this morning. And three, although we could be higher today, today is the last day of the expiration. So the exit would have really been yesterday. But either way, the market still looks strong. So it's like to say something looks strong when you're in the option, all right, it doesn't even matter, anything, anything at all, anything that you're in. It, it, here, this will tie into the discussion that I'm, that I'm wanting to say. Galahad, you didn't. You just didn't write could be turn time. You just didn't write that, did you? Turn time? Why are you obsessed about pullbacks? You are focusing on the wrong things. That's why, in fact, that is why you exited this amazing trade that you could have made a lot of money in when the market gapped down here and you took a loss in a trade that you were up in that went on to be a huge win you took the loss here because you were thinking it was going to pull back. You are not trading gaps anymore. Somewhere along the way, a year ago, three years ago, I don't know when, you turned the corner and now you trade pullbacks, which don't work. And I don't wanna spend any more time lecturing about it. The fact that you just said could be turnaround time, that's that you should not be focusing on that at all. Not It shouldn't even be in your mind whatsoever and that's why you killed this trade. You didn't kill this trade because it gapped down. You killed it because you thought the market was going to pull back and you were worried you're going to lose the whole trade and you killed it and you thought it wasn't going to work because this happened on the 22nd. The trade was good. You should have either gotten out here or held the trade. You killed this trade with a loss here because of the fact that, or no, here, I'm sorry. You killed it Monday. Actually, I don't even know what date I'm at here. I don't even know. Today's February 1st. You killed it here because you thought this was going to pull back. That's why you killed it. You're, you're focusing on pullbacks. So you're trading something completely different and it doesn't work. And I can't waste any more time on it. Anyways, let's get back to what I was saying here. This very well could be higher today, but you lost one day in the, in the cost of the option chain. And remember what we were talking about yesterday with volatility. You get volatility in the movers, in the big movers and the shakers, in the market, in Amazon and Google. This is the only way you're gonna get paid in this and the only way, the only reason this was worth any money at all and worked was because it went to the strike and went through the strike and went a dollar through the strike plus. So yes, this could go to 70 today, but I gotta be honest with you, you're probably gonna be up 200 even if it goes to 70 today. Maybe you'll be up 225, maybe 235. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you lost a day and yes, even if this goes a little bit more than it went, yesterday's high was 69.50, like you're probably gonna be up the same or a little bit more, like not enough to worth risking it to hold it. Like the only way it would be worth it is if it would go to just, if it would really go spike. The fact that you have a week doesn't, doesn't really matter. You had a move. It shouldn't be a consideration, anything at all about any pullbacks. You shouldn't consider it. It shouldn't be a consideration. You make choices based on pullbacks. That's not what I taught you. You're not following what I taught you. You are consequently losing. You've been desperate for a huge trade. You wanted a big winner. I gave you the trades. You even took one of them. It's the only one you took. You didn't do this by. And then you killed the trade with a loss. It's your fault 100%. And until you acknowledge the fact, your own responsibility, that you're not doing the system I taught you, then you're going to continue to lose. That's it. You should be pissed at yourself. You should be angry at yourself. In fact, you should be so angry that you start to listen to me. What is it going to take? 
Now, I was upset with myself two days ago, whenever it was, and we had that day when I ended up getting stopped out of the queues in the morning for one penny. But I got over it. I got over it. I got over it by the afternoon, and I got over it. And yesterday, we had a very active day, but it, but it was a good day. Long and short of it is, you should get angry at yourself and make some serious changes and stop talking about pullbacks because you're not trading, a gap, you're not a gap trader anymore. It should be no consideration for you whatsoever at all because the trade went on to work. <coughs> this dropped, which is again why we didn't do it. So we don't short gap ups, the stock gapped up. We're not doing it. I knew this wasn't good, but we're not doing anything. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying here, <laughs> this still has no volume and flip. Let's just quickly look at CVS. CVS dropped. CVS dropped. I didn't read it. I didn't do it. I didn't like the reason. The market could rally. I'm, my week is over in my mind here. So you could have aggressively done this. No way I would have done it. <laughs> you consider pullbacks, which have no meaning. You, whether you trade them or not, you consider them, and actually the fact that you said you do not trade pullbacks is a complete and total lie because you don't want to enter a trade until it pulls back. That is what you think, and therefore you are trading pullbacks. In your mind, you can rationalize it however you want, Galahad, but it is screwing up your trading method for profits. Period. End of story. You can be in denial. You can continue to be in denial. You can continue to continue to lose money. I have nothing else to say about that subject. Uh, Brent, if this goes over the high today and you're up 150, between 150 and 200 at exit the trade, I wouldn't hold this into next week. I wouldn't hold it into next week. You're losing time value. You missed the exit yesterday. Now, IBM hasn't gone. This is trying to go. This has plenty of time. One day it's going to pop. Looks stronger every day. Um, again, what was I going to say? Oh, what did V do today now? too bad. So I'm going to go over this because it's a good example here of, of the topic that I want to go over. <coughs> you could have shorted CVS. You would have had to be aggressive. I don't think it follows through and, I'm, through and I'm not doing it. If you happen to do it on your own, it made money. I didn't even rate it. That's how much I didn't like it. Uh, let's go over this. So let's just say, and I'm going to talk today about having a small account. Mimi, are you here? Mimi, it looks like you're here, but I don't know if you're listening. So we did this yesterday, but guess what? We were up when we did it. We ended up getting stopped. And that was unfortunate. But the reality is that you could have actually got out of this with profit. And let's go back all the way over here. Wherever you got filled, it wouldn't have mattered. The trade was up. When you took it in here, it dropped. Boom. So again, you could have made 60 cents, 70 cents, 50 cents, 45 cents, 30 cents, whatever. Long and story short was I didn't get out, I took a stop. <coughs> In fact, I even moved the stop, but, so I lost more than I wanted to. However, I gave the trade a chance to work. Let's say you have a small account. Guess what? You could have gotten out of this. You could have gotten out of this with profit without taking the loss. So today's lecture is gonna be about what? What do you do if you have a small account? It's something that Galahad complains about a lot, but he complained when he had a big account. And it's something Steven is trying to, I think, risk more than he should be in his, in his account. Whatever his money and cents is, he's trying to risk more and get fast moves. I think if you have a small account, you should be doing the opposite of what Steven is doing, which is what? Getting out faster. Because if you have a small account, your only goal, if you really, really want to increase your risk, then if, you, if your goal is to build the account, guess what? then you should be getting out faster, almost like scalping. Now, this really wasn't a scalp. It had like five bars down, okay? It just looked really good, so I didn't get out. But it, And again, we got stopped. But anyways, you could have got out of this with money. So if you have a small account, what's the best thing to do? Be more active. Get in, get out, get in, get out, okay? It doesn't mean don't put the stop in, but it means risk a small amount and get out quicker to try to build on the size of your account. It's the opposite of what Steven is doing. So if you're trying to build up your account, like if that really is your goal, you have a small account, you wanna build it up, you don't really care about taking money out each week or each month or whatever, 
You're trying to build it up so that you can grow it to risk more while still learning the system. Then what you should do is chip away at it to build it. Or let's just say you have a bad day. Mimi had a really bad day. I don't know if that was last week, whatever, where she took three trades that she didn't want to take that because she let order sit there and got filled in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a trade. I don't remember the symbol. So she had orders that got filled triple and it was a mess. Anyway, she lost more money than she wanted to because she made a mistake by not canceling the orders. And so what, what should you have done, Mimi? So like, say you have a bad day, chip away at it. Don't try to come back with some huge win that next day or the following trade. Chip it, chip it, chip it. She'll say you lose a thousand bucks and you didn't want to because you ended up doing three trades that you didn't want to take. You only wanted to do one. Make 200, make 300, make 100, make 150. Chip it, chip it, chip it. And if you're trying to grow your account, same philosophy. You have a small account, so you have a five grand. You shouldn't be risking $1,000 in every trade. So what should you do? Take a trade. You could have taken a trade like this, made 50 cents, okay? Take it, ship it. Take it, get out, make 100, make 75, make 80. And then that's how you grow your account. Because the fact is that you have to get somewhere with this in your mind to, uh, to, to appease whatever's going on with you emotionally, which some of you are struggling with. Steven is one, which is why he's had some problems. Mimi, you've made mistakes, just platform errors, and, you're, and, and now you're in a situation where you have to chip away now the losses that you created from that day. <laughs> and you weren't here yesterday, which was a good day, unfortunately. But like yesterday's trade, you, don't, you didn't have to do it the way I did it yesterday. We took the trade, it was good, it was up. If you had a small account, you could have got out fast. I did not. But the fact is that I don't have a small account. So you could money manage yourself differently than me. There's nothing wrong with that. And if the trade sets up again, guess what? You can take it again. What was the one we did yesterday? This. Now, Galahad, I still don't understand how you got out of this with a loss. But anyways, everyone should have got out of this. It went to the target. It was the reversal time. It was a perfect exit. It was a perfect entry. It was perfect. And it was long story short, long story short on this, if it had set up again, you could have retaken it. So there was no reason to stay through it and hold the trade through 20. And if you realize that it's backing up and you have a small account and you didn't get out, then get, just get out. Get out with whatever profit. It's better than losing. Now, I didn't think this would go over the high, but I definitely knew it didn't have a big target. I knew it didn't have a big target. So we had a great exit on this. Galahad, I don't know how you lost on it, but the point is, though, that you have a small account. So you should have been out at the same place as me or even sooner. Or if you didn't react quick enough, then you realize it's backing up, get out. It's whether it continues or not is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Same point here for you, Brent. The fact that this may continue, you may get lucky today because the market is rallying too. But it's irrelevant if it's going further. Do you understand? Your goal is only to make money. And if you have a small account, you really have to be very conscious of that all the time because you can't be overly active. You can't take too much risk per day. You can't overtrain. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on. I'm saying that you take too much risk, Stephen. So this point is the opposite. What you should do is try to build your account up more. Get out quick, but take less size to build your account to the point that you feel comfortable putting the stop at the right place. You say you have enough money to take big size, but it's, it doesn't matter if you do based on the margin. Dollars and cents wise, you don't. Whether whatever you have in your account, I don't know. Whether financially you do or emotionally it's an issue for you or because you're not putting the stops in. You're killing trades and you are taking them out and you're not putting stops in. So even though you might be risking $1,500, you're not putting the stop at the right place. So really you're risking more because you're not giving the trades a chance to work. So my suggestion is take less size, put the stop in, get out fast, which you've been getting out fast, but you got to do it with less size. And if I call a second trade, do a second trade in it then. Do that to try to make a thousand instead of trying to make a thousand in one trade because you're killing them and not giving them a chance to go on and work. I forget the one you did that with, but that worked for us. It was a win. I don't even remember now, but it was one day this week. 
The point is, though, that you should be doing the opposite. Not, not holding, getting out fast, but taking less size so you can build the account. Whether you have enough margin to take big size or not is not the issue for you. The issue is you don't put the stop in. Why? You're scared to lose $1,000 or you really don't have enough money in your account to be able to afford to lose it. I don't know. But scared or reality, it's the same consequence where you are not putting the stop in. Same thing with you, Galahad. So you had a nice trade here yesterday. I did say hold it over the high, and I did say it would go over the high, and I was right. You got out early because you were scared, scared that it was up. So you were, you're were you scared when you're up, and you're scared when you're down. You killed the cues because you were down 170. Trade went on to work. You killed it with a loss. You were scared here when you were down, and you were scared here when you were up. So you're scared every time you're trading. So guess what? You're losing. So if you're scared when you're down, if you're scared when you're up, then you're scared all the time. So guess what? The market smells that you're scared, and it's never going to pay you. You want some trade to go on and be some huge winner right away, so the second after you take it, market smells the fear in you. Just trust me when I say it. You always put the stop in as a safety net, but you will exit before it hits the stop. Well, then what's the point of putting the stop in, Stephen? What's the point? doesn't matter. Listen to what I'm saying. You're killing the train before the stop hits. Whether you put the stop in or not, who, who would know? It makes you feel safer to put the stop in, but you're not giving the trade a chance to work. You're killing it. So it doesn't matter whether you put it in or not. I'm glad you put it in, but you still don't, you're not honoring the stop. You're not honoring the stop. You're scared. It starts to back up. You kill it, even though it's not hitting through the stop. Same philosophy. Same philosophy. Trading scared. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, Mimi, you have no other option now but to chip yourself back because of the screwy thing you did the other day with the with the one trade. You got to chip it back to look and say that you can have some huge trade right away. So turn around that day where you took three trades we didn't want to. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm saying thinking like that. It's probably not likely. Like today, we didn't have anything. Yesterday, we had this. It was nice. It was good. But if you didn't get out at 20, it flipped. <coughs> okay. Anyways, that's the points I wanted to bring up. Chip, chip it. Chip it and chunk it. Chip away at a lost day if you screw up. And chunk it out if you're trying to build a, a bigger account into, from a small one. You got to chunk it out. It will help you because you will realize then that you can start to make some progress. The worst thing that you could do is not make progress and, and then you fall back. So, you know, you don't want to take one step forward and seven steps back. And Galahad, that's what you're doing. So, I mean, you want to take five steps forward and maybe one step back. That That's, you know, that's the progress when you're walking up a, up a hill. It's, you get tired, you got to rest. You lose some time, but you got to keep going. But when you go a little and then you fall back hard on your butt, I mean, it's just making your life more difficult. So to take a huge amount of risk with a small account to try to swing everything around, it just doesn't make sense and you're just not going to get there that way. Whatever it is, Galahad, you're still in denial. You're just in denial. I mean, I, I didn't realize it the other day when you killed this trade, but you killed this trade because you thought the market was going to pull back. And for you, you're still in denial. You're in denial that you're saying you don't trade. You, 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 you do not trade gaps. You are looking at too many other things, whether it's Fibonacci's, whether it's pullbacks, whether it's the sun of the moon. I don't know. But you're making poor decisions based on that. And you also have no money management plan. You still don't. You absolutely still don't. You still don't have a money management plan. I'm waiting for it. You can email it to me today. You got till midnight. Because the next time you do a trade, and you don't follow the money management plan that you're going to write for me. I'm just going to forward it back to you. And then you'll find another excuse. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like, I mean, you got to, you got to start to just take responsibility and you start, you need to start to get upset, like, and like really get mad. You should just be mad at yourself. You should say, at least I just can't believe I did that. And you should get so mad at yourself that you should, you should change. Sometimes that's what it takes. Apparently you're not mad enough at yourself because you still keep making the same mistakes and ignoring me.
Wednesday was a different story. Wednesday was a very difficult day. Wednesday was just a very difficult day. And I don't even want to talk about that right now. It's just, you know, I'm trying to move past it. Wednesday was a hard day and way too active. And I haven't even looked at the commissions. What I don't, I haven't even looked at it because I, I, I don't even want to go back and look at it. When I'm ready to go back and look at it, we can go over it. It might be this weekend. It might not be till another week. I mean, um, that it's pro that's one of the reasons why it's so bad to actively trade because my commissions are going to be absurd. It's it's going to be the highest commission day I probably had in more than a year. It's just I don't even want to look at it because it's it's the commissions are going to be ugly when when you're over trading, which a lot of people do all the time, but we don't. It's it it just sucks up <laughs> everything and it adds to your losses and it takes away your profits when you over trade. And Wednesday was a day if you did all the trades, you you got killed in commission so either way <coughs> Wednesday was a hard day <coughs> excuse me why are men your most troublesome students I don't I never said that I never said that at all I never said that men are most, my most troublesome students I have more men students than female students although I have more female students towards the end of 2018 than I have had in a while but there's just more men that trade the market. And so therefore I have more male students than I have female students. And I never said that I have bad men students or men students are the worst. I never said that. It just so happens that Jackie is a female and she's doing very good. But I have men that are doing very good. I mean, Gerard, who, who actually he is going to be back next week. He was out of the country. Anyways, he was a student of mine and he does well. So, I mean, there's plenty of men that do well. I think Shower Singer, for the most part, does well. He's been here a long time. I haven't talked to him for a long time. Um, but it's not just it's not just the commissions. I shouldn't say it's the ECN fees. Like if you're using Arca to get out, it's it's not it's the ECN fees. It's the ECN fees on top of the commissions. It's it's like I count that as commissions because I say it's the cost, but it's. It's the, it's the ECN fees plus then the commissions. It's like the total cost of the fees is like, uh, you know, which normally when we trade, like if we have a day, we go boop, boop, and it's out. Now we could have just stopped here yesterday, but I'm kind of glad that we did two other things. It all worked out in the end. But anyways, like if we had done one in and one out, boom, you know, that's what we try to do and what we usually do. But when you end up doing two, three, four, you know, and then it's the ECNs, and then it's on top of that with the commissions, that's what I'm telling you. It's, you know, this is, can you imagine trading all day, every day? Like you would pay thousands and thousands and thousands a week in commissions if you traded size. I mean, I don't do that. But Wednesday was a particular day that I absolutely 100% over traded. There's just no excuse for it, but I ended up chipping some back, which was positive for me mentally but at the end of the day, it was a very long day and it all could have been avoided from just giving this more room. So, you know. You seem to be having difficulty as a man, you're saying, with some of these things. I think the only difference between men and women, and I may be incorrect in this, men can correct me or the women can correct me, I think that men are harder, now just listen, this is very important what I'm going to say, whether you're a man or a woman. Men are harder on themselves for expectations than women. I'm saying that as a general blanket statement. I'm saying that as a general statement. I'm not saying it's correct in every case. I'm saying in general, and this is traders or other professions as well. Men are harder on themselves for their own expectations of themselves for financially making money. That is my general analysis of knowing women and men and teaching them and then just also being out in the television world. Men, it, men are expected to be the breadwinners for the most part, and again, I'm generalizing, and so therefore men feel pressure and men feel that their expectations of themselves need to be X, Y, Z. Women, I think, sometimes have it easier. Women are not necessarily expected to be the breadwinners and women are not necessarily expected to go out and make a crap load of money. Now, if a woman is very motivated and wants to do that, that's a different story. A woman may put that pressure on herself. I'm one of those people in that category. I do that to myself. I don't have to do that to myself. I choose to be very aggressive and very motivated and that's 
on me, but it's a choice, okay, that I push myself. But it's different where the expectation in society is that I think men in general put the pressure on themselves. <laughs> if you're single, what doesn't hold? What do you mean, Canty? She even says exactly, yeah. If the trade is backing up and you can't afford the full loss, you're trying to build your account back, you should get out and not wait for the stop. No, wait, say that again? No, I was talking, don't get confused about Steven. Steven here is taking trades. He did in V. No, it wasn't V. What was it? Steven did something where the trade went on to work and make money and he killed it when it backed up. I'm not saying you should do that, Mimi. I'm saying, Mimi, you weren't here yesterday. But because you had a bad day with that loss the one day, if you had been here, Mimi, yesterday, Lee took a stop in V. I would have screamed Mimi, or you should know it yourself, to get out of this with whatever, 200 bucks. Because that would help to chip away at what you were down that previous day. That's the point I was trying to make. Steven, I'm trying to help him to stay with the trades. You, Mimi, need to chip away at that loss and also make sure that you're getting the platform you know, down correctly. Uh, if, if you're having trouble taking the trades or putting orders out or stops in or something, then I would cut back your size until you're more acclimated to the platform, which may be another solution as well. Candy is very responsible, so you push hard for success. You were lightly when you were married. It means you're responsible for yourself even when not, you were still self-motivated. Yeah, I'm the same way. You know, well, I've never been married, but I would imagine that if I was married, it's hard to imagine that I would be any different, but I, it's just hard to imagine. But there is a pressure on men, and I don't think it's fake. I think it's real. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's real. So, I mean, what are you going to do? It's like, I mean, if I had to be honest with myself, I said, well, here I am. I'm still single. Now, who am I going to marry? Now, it'd be great to say, well, I'm going to marry someone that's less successful as me. Now, how do you define that? Well, it could be a million different things. But let's just say I meet somebody that makes less money than me. Am I going to fall in love with them? Sure, I could fall in love with them. They could be a wonderful, amazing person. They could, he could be handsome and loving and wonderful and fabulous and everything great. But is he going to feel okay about that? Or is he going to feel emasculated by not making as much money as me? I, I don't know. So it's, you know, you get, it's at a certain age, I think you get to a point, you say, well, it is real. The feelings that men have about, you know, their own success, their own financial success, it's legitimate. And I mean, it, it, it spills over into other areas, into someone's personal life. So it's like, it's real. And I think, you know, so men feel pressured to do very well all the time with everything they do and make more money than the woman. And that's, I think that's real. Women, women, I'm not saying women don't feel pressure, but I'm saying that women, you know, I don't know. I don't, I'm not saying they handle it better, but I'm just saying like women, I don't think in society it's not the same. Now, if you're a single mother, if you have kids, if you don't have a spouse, or if you're just period single and you're the breadwinner in yourself, then maybe you do push yourself because you don't have someone else to fall back on. But that's you personally. It's not necessarily society. Yeah. Anyways, the point, I'm trying to help the people with small accounts today or that have been making mistakes with the platform, like an, like Mimi, ship it back and chunk it out to build your account and stop putting the pressure on yourself to try to make X, Y, Z amount of money at a certain period of time. We're about halfway through earning season, give or take a day or week. And I'm just saying that <coughs> at this point, you know, you, you need to get like, get it together. And I know that this week, there were some days that were easy at the beginning of the week. Then Wednesday was hard. Yesterday was an easy day. Today, we we're not doing anything, which was a good decision because nothing really was good. But we still got earnings season the whole next month. And, you know, it's time to get it together. So you have this weekend to get organized in your mind. Like, what are you going to do? You could have a trading plan where you're scalping out to try to build your account. It doesn't mean it has to be your trading plan for the rest of your life. So you could exit trades with profit before I do. Unless I tell you this is greater, it swishes. You could do that. It doesn't mean it has to be for the rest of your life. You could say, well, this first 
quarter earnings season until April 1st, I'm going to just scalp and that's okay. Or I'm going to cut back my risk or whatever. Canteen's been too cautious because of her size of account. Yeah. There's a difference between cautious and scared. Okay. So it's like, I don't even like that word cautious. I would say responsible. Responsible is a better word. So there's a difference between being scared and being, you know, irresponsible. So if you, if you are taking a ridiculous amount of risk, like say you have a $2,500 account and you take a thousand dollar loss in the day, that's totally irresponsible. It's almost half your size of account. But to take a trade like Galahad did with this and kill it, that's scared. That's trading scared. And he killed a trade when he was up. Scared. So, I mean, you know, it's a, there's a difference between trading scared and being, you know, responsible. You have to know what the difference is. And you know what? It's not that hard to tell because... But it is hard to tell if you're not if you're not if you're not honest with yourself. Which Galahad, you're not honest with yourself. You you're in denial about the strategy you're using to trade and make decisions. You're com complete and total denial. So if you can't be honest with yourself, you're not gonna you're not gonna make good choices. You got to be honest with yourself and say, you know what? I can tell how I feel when I'm in a trade and I'm scared and I can tell and I'm nervous and I'm worried and I'm scared about it. Like Brent asked me about this today. He's nervous. He realizes that he should have got out yesterday. Brent, you can tell me if I'm right. Now you're nervous and you feel it and you're like, oh crap. I missed my exit on this probably. So you asked me about it because you probably don't have 100% conviction that it's going to continue as far as, even though you have a next week, even though you have another week, even though it looks good, even though it's strong. So you try to tell yourself, well, it looks strong, but you know, you didn't even need to ask me this. So you're nervous. Now you're in it. I don't know if you're flat. If you're up, you're not down. You're not down in this today. I mean, what are you up? What are, what, where is it at? But the point is that you knew, you can tell. So when you're honest with yourself, you can tell. It's like, you don't even need to, to, no, to ask me, you know. Lack of confidence in the trade. The reason that you have lack of confidence, that you had lack of confidence in this specific trade was that you didn't have 100% conviction that the market was going to move higher. And the reason is why? Because you believe that the only good entries are pullbacks. You are not trading gaps. You didn't look at the gap in the day that I called the trade and think it was good. You didn't look at the follow through as good. But that was a lie because I said to you, oh, why didn't you get out here when you were up $100? Well, it looked good, Melissa, you said. It looked good. So then here, all of a sudden, you thought it didn't look good. It was still good. There was nothing wrong with this. So you change your mind every day. One day you think it looks good. One day you think it looks bad. One day you think it looks good. One day you think it looks bad because you're not focusing on the gap. If you have 100% conviction in the gap and the stock has one red day or even a gap down, you're not going to all of a sudden say, well, that gap up that happened wasn't good. You're not going to say that at all. But that's what you say to yourself. So, I mean, the reality is if you didn't have confidence in the trade, well, then why did you take it? You shouldn't have even taken it at all. You change your mind every day, just like you do about your money management. So you are doing that because you're not focused on the gap, because in your mind, in your belief system, the only good entries is when something comes down into support after a three-day pullback or a five-day pullback or a two-day pullback or something, and then goes. So that's the only time. And if I call a trade, into momentum, you don't do it because you think that it's too late, even if it goes like a rocket. I think you didn't do Lulu. One of the ones you didn't do that was just the way I described. I forget what it was, it was like a month ago or a couple weeks ago. The cues have sold off. Should you go long the cues now? No. Why? Again, why shouldn't you go long the cues today? And why didn't we go long the market today? file looks different but why this looks ugly 
this was nothing. Why? I mean, it's like seriously that I'm like talking to like uh, uh, myself. Why aren't the cues a long today as a day trade? Again, if you're still in the trade that expires today, then good luck. It could go over the high from yesterday, but you really got to get a move over 170 to get paid bigger than yesterday. But why wasn't this a good day trade today? Everyone should know the answer. Everyone except Jeff because he hasn't done the class yet. Somebody better answer this right. Let me just see what else is going on here. I'm on Fox today for the first time in a month. I said yes because I've been sick. They want me to look at a small cap. I don't, I don't look at small cap stocks. I just don't. I agree. Um, what? No one answered me. Why isn't the Q's a buy today? Why isn't the QQQs a day trade today, even though it's green, even though the market's strong, even though we had good economic data? Canty is kind of getting it, but that's not really the answer I'm looking for. There's nothing to do in the Qs today, but somebody wanted to buy it, and somebody said, why isn't it along? And I'm asking you why isn't it isn't along today. And nobody answered. Canty is trying to work it out in her mind, but it's not 100%. Brent got it. He just did the class. And great job because you did just do the class. It didn't gap up. It did gap, but it didn't gap up. The Q's gapped down. Spy gapped up. We're not going long. A gap down. Stock closed here last night at 168.16. Wasn't a big gap down. We wouldn't have shorted it. Could have gone either way. I said there's no play in here. Open at 167.37. Markets rallying. Could it go over the high? Could it have follow through? Yes. But there's no long here. It's a day trade. It's market gap down. It really was a nothing gap down though. But the SPY did have a nice move. And can anybody tell me why the Qs don't look so good, even though they're stronger overall? Apple is just not doing anything even remotely interesting. And that is a big part of the Qs. And I don't know. This is going to drag everything down. You took it for granted. Don't take it for granted. Don't focus on the moving averages. That's what Galahad does. Don't take it for granted. That's all you should be care about. Everything else is secondary. There was something else I was going to say. For those of you that we didn't we didn't finish the class because I was sick on Sunday. I'll send an email out about it today. I think we, I think everybody should just retake the class next Sunday. Although I could finish the two hours that we did not finish this week one day, I think it's better just for everybody to retake it on the Sunday, which is February 10th. Options class is Monday. For those of you that are doing it, I already sent out the link. If you didn't get it, email me. And then next week, we should focus on trading and making money, and I think you should just retake the class on Sunday the 10th. Galahad, I don't know what you focus on, but whatever you tell me you focus on today, you'll change tomorrow. So it's kind of like, whatever. All right, so help me find some small cap stocks here since I got to figure this out and get back to them right now. What should we look at? 